My mom's affair partner tried to break into our house after I kicked him out. Now she's begging for forgiveness. I'm male 20. My dad, male 45, serves in the U.S. military and we've often shifted around a lot as a family. We'd be moved around a lot and usually stay near army bases, but I have always been proud of my dad's work and have made the best of our family setup. Obviously, it was hectic to move so often and I grew up like your classic military brat. I make friends easily and don't really have a hometown of any kind. My mom, female 43, however, has trouble with the lifestyle that comes with the military and really wants a place to settle down. About four years ago, she gave an ultimatum to dad where she claimed that she's done with moving around and wanted a place to settle down. They talked it out and decided that a relationship where they would meet infrequently but with a solid home would be best for my mom. With that, my parents bought a nice house near Milwaukee, my mom's home city, and I chose to stay with her while I attended college in Marquette. So basically for the last four years, I've seen my dad maybe once or twice. Um... So that's even tougher to get in touch with him in the past couple of years as he was stationed overseas. It hurts my heart to say this, but I took on other things, and it's a large part of why a rift was created between us. Obviously I loved him, but it just wasn't the same as when dad used to come back home more often. Often, I got a lot closer to my mom, but some things about her kind of irked me as I grew up in Wisconsin. Like she used to badmouth dad a little bit and blame him for losing the best years of her life. At least when we were sitting together for dinner, I used to just calmly tell her that dad was making sacrifices for us too, but she wasn't open to listening. Later on, she started talking about how empty the house felt after I moved into a dorm for college. This is where things went downhill. One time I was back from my spring break and my mom casually brought up the topic of bringing in her friend to stay at the house. It's been so quiet ever since you moved out. My friend Jake just moved here. He's been a bit down on his luck and just got out of a messy divorce. I was thinking of letting him stay here just for a few months until he gets back on his feet. At the time I agreed to this idea because Engel the house was huge and mom was there all alone. Sure her family and friends did stay in Milwaukee, but they usually couldn't come all the way out to visit or were sometimes too busy. Having an old friend around might have been good for her. I was a little cautious of letting the dude stay here rent-free and take advantage of the situation, but she vouched for her friend. Mom told me that Dad was also on board with the idea, and I took her word for it. So in a few short weeks, her friend Jake moved into the house. While I was there for the remainder of spring break, everything seemed fine, and the guy seemed like a decent enough person, but he's been staying at the house for almost two years now. And I cringe to even think about this, but I'm suspicious of his relationship with my mom. Here's the thing, during one of the rare times I could call dad and talk to him about everything that was going on, I did say something like, hey, it's good that mom has a friend to catch up with now, right? And he agreed saying John was a mutual buddy of theirs, but he didn't see the overly close nature of their relationship that I could on video calls and visits to the house. It was obvious something was going on. I just didn't have any proof and to be honest I thought I was overthinking. It took a completely different event in order to get the truth out in front of everyone. What happened was I visited my mom after my exams ended and she said she had a surprise for me. That's when she told me that Jake had been working on a novel of his own, but working from cafes where the confines of the guest bedroom was hampering his creative flow. She had already remodeled my room without ever telling me and had moved all my stuff into the basement in a bunch of cardboard boxes. My trading cards, posters, everything that I owned. She'd even thrown away a few things she deemed unnecessary without asking me. And I snapped and said, why did you do all of this for just some dude? What the hell is going on? And mom responded by saying, Jake is more than just some dude OP. He's been here while you've been in college and your dad's never here. It's the least I can do for him. I was certain that nobody would go so far for a simple friend and I needed to confirm my suspicions. I asked my buddy in the neighborhood to keep a close eye on my house after I left, and he told me that Jake and my mom had been going out together, and once they came back late, at night, a little drunk, and kissed on the porch. He could see mom chiding him for it and looking around before they went inside. That was enough for me to lose the little faith I had left in my mom, and I contacted my dad as soon as I could. I told him about everything, and he was silent for a while. Then he told me that he was going to fix things and asked me to go to the house next week. A couple of days after the call, I got a long emotional call telling me that dad had filed for divorce, and she spun a sob story about falling apart since I don't think she thought I knew about her infidelity, and I nodded along. I was going to have to take care of the house until dad could arrange to leave and come back to Milwaukee. I settled in and dealt with the drama of the divorce. Phone calls from relatives, friends, yada yada. However, where I may be T, 
A comes in now. After I moved into the house, I took all my stuff back up to my room and threw away everything Jake had left behind. Then I set it up exactly as it was or as close as I could get and posted a picture with the caption, it's good to be back and I guess it rubbed my mom the wrong way. She wants me to believe that despite all her problems that I should still give her respect and not do something petty like this just cause. I didn't even consider her point of view because I mean she's the one who cheated but as emotions have become less charged I feel like I should have just been the bigger man in this scenario. Dad is coming back tomorrow but something really concerning happened recently. I got home from work one day to find Jake waiting at the door. He didn't want much to say to me, but told me that the sudden eviction had left him out of the loop and he needed a place to stay. He asked if I would be okay with letting him stay in the guest bedroom for a few nights with my mom until they found proper accommodation. So I laughed in his face and told him to get the frick out, but he said that he wasn't asking. So later on I heard him and a few people outside the door threatening me to open it and come outside and I immediately grabbed my gun and hollered at them from the window. That was enough to scare them away, but I've called the cops and reported what happened. Dad is also aware of the situation, and he's pissed. The house doesn't feel very safe right now, and when I call mom to tell her what her affair partner had done, she didn't pick up my call. I know she's a terrible person, but I'm a little worried for her too. I'm going to ask around and see what's happening. Update 2. It's a lot worse than I imagined. Jake as a person is a little troubled and the eviction ended up making him have a fight with mom, which spiraled into him, showing up outside my door. Mom picked up my call later that day and told me she'd broken things off with Jake and wanted a second chance with dad. So by this time dad had gotten back home and he overheard the call. He took the phone from me and calmly said, babe, not a chance in hell. With that he handed the phone back and I heard mom crying about the whole situation again. Uncle I don't really feel much sympathy for her. I mean, if she didn't want a life like this, I would have even respected her divorcing dad and dating. But cheating is just disgusting. When she calmed down, I told her what Jake had done, and she had no idea he had come to my house. She told me that after the breakup she was staying with her sister and Jake had been blowing up her phone, but she had no idea what he'd really been doing. I was also confused as to who the other people with Jake were, and to be honest, it seems like it's going to be a mystery. However, with my dad back, I feel a lot safer. Him and I had a deep talk about everything that's happened, and he's respectable enough to not badmouth mom to me. He just said that he has his morals and mom is not the partner he wants in his life, and I totally get that. The divorce isn't going to be too contentious, and since I'm not a kid, there won't be any reason to fight for custody either. So my dad used some of his contacts in the police force to find out where Jake was, and we found him drunk out of his mind in a sleazy bar near the highway. He was brought in for an attempted break-in, and it turns out that he had hired local goons to help him break into the house. So what he thought he would achieve after that I shudder to think. Thankfully I had managed to scare them off. He confessed, and has been in a weirdly depressive state after that. Jake will still be going to jail for a long time and he claims that mom seduced him and ruined his life. Big whoop from me, I don't care what happened. I want to punch this dude every time I see him. Mom sure didn't force him to try and break into my house. Anyways, we're all good now. Dad is going to be staying with me in the house for a couple of months and then probably move to a local posting or figure out something else like that. I'm a little shaken after everything that's happened, but to be honest, my original Ata question has gotten blown out of the water by what Jake did. Tenta, she didn't take consent to change the room and there's definitely something says going on between Jake and your mom. Ta, she's a cheater and also a terrible mom. Eat it. Just read the update. Glad you're safe OP, but this is just insane. Good on you for checking in on your mom. I feared that she would also be a part of this nut jobs plan. Is jobs and shoplin to plan. That would have just been really heartbreaking for you. Next story. I have two nephews, John 25 and Finn 15. I love both dearly, but John is a bit difficult to be around. He still acts like a child and is incredibly mean to his younger brother. I'm putting it lightly actually he's terrible to Finn. My sister doesn't say anything because he has autism but will instead spoil Finn to make up for the bullying. It's a really weird situation that I didn't pick up on until very recently after I moved closer to them. My sister, brother-in-law and nephews came over for dinner the other day. It was going well when all of a sudden my daughter 18 told me she didn't find her very expensive necklace. I had assumed she had misplaced it and assured her I'd help her find it later, but then I noticed that Finn looked extremely nervous. I took him aside and asked him if he was all right. He ended up admitting that he had stolen her necklace. He busted into tears saying that he was really sorry he didn't want to and John made him do it. He was bordering on a panic attack. 
I called my sister over and told her what happened. I then asked her what she was going to do about this, and she said, What am I supposed to do? I can't control them and they're old enough to figure things out on their own. So I said, so you're completely fine with John bullying Finn. It doesn't bother you at all. She said that it does bother me, so I asked why she didn't do anything about it then. I straight up told her that I didn't want to hear any of her bullshit excuses. She asked me what I meant by that, so I told her your excuses are pathetic. John has autism. Boys will be boys. I'm scared. Finn needs to learn to stand up for himself, etc. etc. I told her that these are all bullshit and that she's setting both kids up for failure. She started bawling and calling me a heartless, judgmental bitch who won't understand. She then left leaving her husband and kids. I told her husband what happened and he just sighed. My mom then called me later saying that I should be kinder to my sister. I told her I was just telling the truth. My mom then said that I was acting like one of those annoying. I was only being honest to holes. A-I-T-A-N-T-A. I had to check John's age twice. He's 25. He's an adult, so autism isn't an excuse for bullying even if he were a kid. Honestly ask Finn if the day he turns 16 he wants to move into your home and be part of your family and get away from an older brother who torments him and a mother who doesn't care to help him. I feel sorry for your sister who if she says she's afraid is likely also getting bullied by John. But she is an adult. She needs to figure this out herself. Finn's the one who needs rescuing. N.T.A. Your sister is an enabler and judging by her husband's reaction, he's sick and tired of trying to change it. I would just not have them over to my house if they're going to have drama and steal my child's stuff if I were you. N.T.A. I'm 53, autistic and I was the bullied child. Mom needs to get her sons into therapy. John onto medication and start practicing tough love. All you did was hit an exposed nerve and mom is covering up for her. Perhaps you could have been a tad more delicate in your comments but it needed to be said. Both kids can still have good lives if their parents act. Next story. For anonymity, I'm using a throwaway and not mentioning country names. I, 25, female, moved out of the country I grew up in seven years ago for college. A lot has happened since then, and it's not relevant to the post. But long story short, I have no family left in my home country. So I chose to acquire dual citizenship and stay where I now live. Recently I reconnected with my childhood friends and I was really happy to reunite and catch up. They can't all come over to me because it's super expensive for three people to pay for a flight and accommodation. One of them, B, 26, female, is married and she and her husband have a big home and usually invite the other two for weekends over vacations. So she suggested they have me over this time for their early January vacation for two weeks. My job allows me to work from anywhere as long as I have my tablet and stylus so it wouldn't inconvenience me if I was away for two weeks. The others took time off work, I think. The vacation was great for the most part, and they were all kind to me, despite all the years apart. B's husband was welcoming, but that's the conflict came in. Whenever I took some time to myself to work a little, he would be there making small talk and joking around. Sometimes he would tell me things about himself and then say he doesn't feel like he has anyone to share these things with. I have no problem with being a confidant of some sort, but I believe a husband shouldn't be spending too much alone time with his wife's friend, no matter the reason. I told him this when it got too uncomfortable, and I explained my reasons. That's when he got really inappropriate and tried to shoot his shot. I freaked out and told him something along the lines of B. Is a great woman I can't believe you would disrespect her like this. Things got awkward after that. So I told my friends I'll find a hotel to stay at for the rest of my stay. They all burst out laughing saying things like gotcha and asked if it was because B's husband came on to me. I asked how they knew because as long as he kept his distance I wasn't planning to tell B and possibly cause an argument between them. It turns out they were all in on it to prank me. I was furious. It didn't sound like a prank to me but one of those meaningless tests people do to test each other's loyalty. Things got heated and I left to find a hotel after giving them all a piece of my mind, including B's husband. I got here yesterday evening. One of the other friends called me saying vacation is ruined since B's husband is angry that I called him in a hole in the argument and wants them to leave. She hoped I could apologize. Also, B does this to all her new friends to see how loyal they are because her husband is handsome and a great guy and women want him. I responded with I wish I gave in to this great guy then and hung up. Now that I've calmed down I think maybe I went a little too far with my response. A-I-T-A-A -A edited to use B short form of her name instead of only the first letter. N-T-A this is manipulation and emotional abuse. You didn't ruin the vacation they did. Please don't hang around with these people anymore. They're toxic and you're better off without them. N-T-A your friend has a weird obsession with power. 
She wants to test her husband and her friends. She makes unreasonable and unpleasant demands and now this apologize for calling me in a whole thing from the husband. How would that even help? He doesn't need an apology from you to get on with his vacation without you. I hope for your sake that was the last time you see any of them. If you were in an episode of Punk, you would have passed with flying colors. N.T. you didn't go too far. You were being manipulated and stressed out for their entertainment, and anyone who pulls a loyalty test, like that you need to have some self-pride and walk away from them, for good, and you did that before, even knowing it was a test. Good for you. Next story. I rent out the bottom half of a duplex to a married couple. Today when I got home from work the husband was standing on his stoop and sort of waved me over. So I went over to his side. Our driveways and entrances are on different sides of the house and asked what was up. He asked if I changed the locks. I said no and I tried my key. It didn't work. This freaked me out and he said he thought his wife did it. So I asked why she would and he said she was mad at him. I called his wife and she picked up. She said she was at work but she would talk to me when she got back. I said she needed to come back with the keys right away. She asked if her husband was there and I said yes. She said not to let him in. I went out and bought new locks. I entered through the basement and unlocked the door for the husband and he helped me switch out the locks. I explained that the price of the new locks was coming out of their deposit and he said he understood. I made copies of the keys and gave him a set and called the wife to tell her she could pick her set up from me and explain about the security deposit. She flipped at me for letting the husband in and giving him the keys. I explained that he is on the lease and I was fulfilling a legal obligation. She said that was BS and I made a choice and it was a bad one. She called me out for being a woman who doesn't support other women. She said her husband cheated and I was helping him escape the consequences. I said I couldn't get involved in their marriage and reminded her to come pick up her keys. She called me a bitch and hung up. I asked my sister for input and she also said I was an ass for helping out a cheater. I feel like I can't pick sides because I have a legal and moral obligation to abide by the terms of our contract and provide both of them with access to the bottom half of a duplex. Am I in a hole for not supporting other women? NTA. It varies from place to place but in a lot of places states it is illegal for a tenant to change the locks without the owner's permission. Either way, as you were already thinking, as the landlord it is not your place or responsibility to act as their marriage counselor or referee, and since he's on the lease he is allowed to go in the house. Note, if you don't already have it in your lease the next time you have a tenant sign a lease, include a clause saying that they cannot change the locks without your permission. It's in a lot of places that is the law anyway, but it is good to have it in writing with their signature. N-T-A, he, is on the lease. You do have a legal obligation. If it were something dangerous, she would have called the police and gotten a restraining order. So then you could change the locks and keep him out. Rightfully so. Stay out of their marriage. Document everything in case she does it again. And so you can charge for the locks. So if in doubt, call the police station for their advice. Non-emergency line as well. NTA. Not only did you have a legal obligation to provide access, but you're also supposed to have a key for access yourself if something happens, aren't you? Angry wife didn't mention anything about it to you or have a key for you even though she shouldn't have changed the locks in the first place. Next story, this guy and I have been friends since we were five. We dated from elementary into middle school, but we broke up halfway through sixth grade. He was my first boyfriend, but I'm certain we didn't have romantic love for each other, though we did care about each other a lot. Fast forward to our adult years, I, 25F, and him, 25M, ended up having sex a week after New Year's 2024. To be honest, it wasn't great. There was no foreplay, no dirty talk, and his main concern was making sure the neighbors didn't hear us, which was a huge turnoff. After that, he left for Canada, and I thought that was the end of our sexual encounters, which I covers perfectly fine with. In July 2024, he texted me to check in and asked if I was single. He had done this before, just to see if I was dating anyone. We were friends who had sex and I didn't think much of it since he knew where I stood on relationships. Our texting lasted longer than I intended and it became clear he wanted sex again. Despite my reservations from our first encounter, I thought maybe it would be different this time so I agreed. Since he came back, we've had sex three times and each time was disappointing. He still worried about the neighbors hearing us. There was no foreplay or dirty talk and whenever he hit the right spot, He'd switch it up to keep me from moaning too much. It made me just want him to finish quickly and leave. I even gave him head but he never offered to reciprocate. I suggested 69-ing 
but he either didn't understand or chose to ignore it. After our last encounter on July 15th, 24, I started making excuses to avoid him. So I've been thinking of a way to kindly tell him, you suck at sex. You don't listen to my needs. It feels like you're just using me to get off, and it's a huge turn off. Please find someone else, or do it yourself, without sounding harsh. Here's what he does during sex. I ask him to go harder. He does for a second, then goes back to his usual routine, which is basically rolling his dick inside me. I ask him to stimulate my clit, and he awkwardly taps it with his fingers, missing the mark every time. I request foreplay like playing with my boobs or pussy, but it's ignored. His routine is simple, touch my nipple a bit, kiss my neck a bit, then enter me until he finishes. I don't know if it's a lack of experience, or if he just doesn't care since we're just sex partners. Either way, I'm done with it. Overall, he's a good guy, and I don't want to hurt his feelings, but I need to end this unsatisfying sexual relationship. Any advice on how to do that kindly without hurting his ego or pride? Update, yesterday I decided to tell him, let's call him Ken, that I didn't want to have sex with him anymore. Since we live in the same area, it was easy to meet up. I messaged him, and he quickly responded. He came over, and we sat down in the living room. I offered him a glass of water, which I never do when he comes over for sex, and he immediately asked, what did you want to talk about? I sat across from him and, taking advice from Reddit and my friends, decided to tell him a mix of the truth and a white lie. I said, Hey, sorry for not replying to your message Friday night, but I want to pause our sexual relationship because I'm seeing someone, and we want to see where things go. Sorry for the late update we were figuring things out. He looked down and said, Nah, it's cool. I was going to tell you we needed to stop too because I'm growing my relationship with God. I got baptized and need to change my ways. This took me by surprise because I knew he had been involved with church in Canada. So he must have gotten baptized before he came back to New York and before we had sex the second, third, and fourth times. I was like, what? And he asked to step out for a minute. While he was outside, I updated some friends, and we all found it amusing. When he came back in, I asked, are you okay? He said yes. I told him it was for the best since we both had reasons to end the sexual relationship, and we said our goodbyes. I thought that was the end of it. About half an hour later he texted I just have one question for you, hoping it was something trivial like where I got the glass I poured his water in. It was a cute glass. I said, sure, what is it? He replied, what's your honest opinion on my size and performance? I wanted to throw my phone. He knew I didn't enjoy sex with him and wanted confirmation but why did he care? We weren't going to have sex again, and if he was focusing on God, why ask? So, I replied, anything before God shouldn't matter. Focus on your relationship with God, and don't worry about these minor details. So, but he didn't let it go. He said, I'm not worried, I just wanted your feedback. So at this point I was done caring about his feelings and said, honestly, sex with you made me want to cry in sadness. You left me completely unsatisfied every time and cared more about the neighbors than my needs. Your performance had me reaching for my dildo and vibrator every single time because you failed to make me come. He replied, LOL, I figured. I ended the conversation with a simple okay because I was so frustrated. He essentially laughed off being bad at sex. What do you all think? It's such a weird reaction, and he knew he was bad.